Hi, we're here today to get a faculty perspective uh, on the teachings of Virtual University of Pakistan from Dr. Talat Afza, who's been teaching some courses uh, with the university. Um, the Virtual University of Pakistan has over 100,000 students. They are actually less than 10 years old, and they're one of those success stories that the world should know about. And uh, they've graduated many students. Their students have been uh, accepted around the world in other universities. So today, let's find out a bit about uh, teaching practices and how it actually works. Dr. Talat Afza, thank you for being here, and thank you for taking your time to answer some questions. Um, how was your experience as a faculty member with the Virtual University of Pakistan? You know, it was quite an experience. Uh, I have been involved in teaching from last 30 years, but when I was contacted by the director of Virtual University of Pakistan, you come and deliver a few lectures online, that was a kind of very new type of thing to me. Okay, I agreed. And then we devised how to go about it. We prepared the slides and stuff. And then when I came for the recording of my very first lecture, you know, it was kind of very unusual for me. I was expecting I will come to the class, there will be students, and then, you know, as per the routine. Anyways, so when I came to the studio, and uh, incidentally, this was the studio <laughs> where I got my first lecture recorded as well. And later on, the same studio was being used. And I just came, and there were like two, three individuals, all right? And there was like two, three different cameras, and I was told, uh, you have to face this camera, and then you have to move to the, the next camera. And during my lecture, I was allowed to use the slides. Okay, the slides were there, so LCD was there. I had the control of the LCD, so I could change the slide and stuff. But anyhow, what I was missing was the main content of having the students. There was a camera, okay, and behind the camera, there were two legs, and that was all in the class. So it was uh, kind of very different environment. So it was tough, in a sense, uh, that you have to teach without the students. And I was used to having the students sitting in the classroom, okay, giving some kind of expression, sometimes comfortable expression, sometimes a kind of expression that please just leave us now or change the tone or stuff like that. But overall, when I, now I'm finished and I see the result of my lecturing on virtual university and the benefit is going to the students and the number of students who are now benefiting from my lectures is far more than the students who were sitting in my class uh, in the normal routine lecturing. Okay, so it's not really uh, being videotaped while you're given a lecture live, but it's actually prepared to where every minute of that lecture is filled with content. Yes, yes, it was. Okay, and having said that, uh, while making these lecture notes, was it easier or more difficult than traditional classes to prepare for a lecture? Uh, it was different to begin with. Uh, because in the lecture, you just leave some open-ended questions and you leave something for the discussion. And you want the student participation and you expect students will ask questions and then you will answer the questions and there will be kind of discussion and something will come out of the discussion and it will cover up the topic. Sometimes you distribute the class into groups while you are discussing the case studies. Sometimes you just have the discussion one-to-one -one with the student. But here you knew there won't be any students. So you have to achieve the same objective, learning objective, uh, in the absence of the students. So everything has to be planned through those slides and your lecturing. So that was a big challenge for me. So but. I could manage it, so I devised a policy how to do it. So just uh, take help from uh, slides, put a question mark on that, and you just behave like a student, and you just assume that the student must be having this question in mind. And then you become the teacher and answer the same question there. So and would you say for the benefit of other professors who have never taught online classes, <clears throat> would you say that you spent the same amount of time, more time, or less time than you would in preparation for this class? I think the reading material is the same amount of time. But when it comes to the preparation of the lecture and formally delivering the lecture, so then you need more time, especially for the preparation.
Okay. In, in, from a student's perspective, uh, do you think they get a richer experience in the online world simply because they have all these lectures and they can read it or see it over and over and over again where in the on-ground classes they don't really have that benefit of seeing it again? What are your thoughts? I think I personally feel the students who are responsible students, but they are busy in other things, doing other things, but they are self-driven. Online education is the best thing to do. If they cannot take time out, they have so many alternatives available. But if you are in a regular setup, if you miss the class, you miss the train, right? right. But so that is the benefit of online education and having all of those CDs and uh, online. And then they, they have like four different TV channels on through which they broadcast all the lectures for different courses. And they are a repeat as well. And they also have their schedule of the lectures available on uh, online on the virtual university site. The student can go through uh, the schedule and can look at his time schedule or her, his or her time schedule and then just select which channel will be releasing this lecture of which course. So he can do that. Okay, so, so not only they're able to see the lectures online, they can also see it on television. Yes. They can also see it uh, through a CD. Yes. Okay, so that makes it more convenient for students uh, who may not have access to a computer. They can uh, request the CD mm -hmm. or they can see it on television. Yes. yes. Okay, well, that's, that's really a good experience. Um, in terms of um, other faculty who are resistant mm -hmm. to online and they say, well, online students may not learn as much, mm -hmm. what would be your suggestions to them? I think uh, to begin with, we need to differentiate the uh, students here because the fresh students who are coming from the high school and entering into the undergraduate degrees, I think they are not that much responsible and careful. Yeah. So for them, perhaps uh, the traditional education is more suitable. But if you are an individual who has entered into the practical life, but you want to enhance your education, the online is the better choice. Okay, okay, so it just makes it more convenient, obviously, because they can do their job. Mm -hmm. At the meantime, take care of their family members and continue their education. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, <clears throat> having said that, do you think it's cheaper to have an online program or more expensive for universities? As far as my information is concerned, this online education, especially the virtual university of Pakistan, it is very, very affordable, very economical in comparison to the like, regular uh, setup of the universities. Okay, and um, how are the exams administered usually? I think they have uh, different uh, centers, virtual university centers, and the students, they uh, make their own date sheet, okay, and they select online which date is suitable, which time is suitable to them. And it is, they have to register themselves for the exam for one course on first come first sub basis. Okay. So when that uh, slot is closed, then they need to go to the second available slot. And then on the day of the exam, they have to visit one of the study centers. So they have to go to the study center and then take the exam under invigilation. And then the exam is online, but they are being monitored. And then they submit online exam and it is being graded. Okay, in, in when they're taking the exam, is it open book, open notes, or basically they have to do it off their memory? I think it varies from subject to subject, okay. depending on if these are the basic subject, definitely it has to be closed book. But if it's in some of the advanced uh, courses, if they give some kind of uh, case study and stuff, they may allow them to use the a material study material as well. Okay, but in all cases, somebody is monitoring them and yes. they, they basically go to these centers. Yes. And somebody's monitoring them until the exam is completed. Right, right. Okay, great. Um, are there any thoughts, suggestions, recommendations you would have for our faculty members who want to transition into the online program or for administrators who are considering mm -hmm. having an online uh, program? I think my suggestion is that, uh, uh, you know, as was my case that I was very reluctant. I was not convinced to begin with whether I will be that useful or not. But 
after completing like lecturing for four courses, now I'm totally convinced this is a very effective mode of transmitting knowledge to the knowledge learners. And especially for individuals who are stuck in their daily routines and who like to pursue their careers as well as enhance their education, this is the best available thing. So all of us as the teaching faculty should not be reluctant, should come forward and help that segment of the society. Okay, and last question is, how does Virtual University of Pakistan actually select the faculty? I think you should be posing this question to the rector of the university, but as far as I know, I think he looks around and the country and as uh, per my information, they try to select the most qualified professional of the field to come and deliver lectures on virtual university because I have seen and the big names, the big researchers and the teachers and the professionals, they are the one who are delivering the lectures most of the time. Okay, so the best faculty in his or her area from around the country, the country and possibly abroad is selected and they're given flexibility in terms of preparing the material, time obviously recording, lectures, yes. uh, course material, and then that material is taught basically consistently. Right, right. Okay. And um, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to give us a faculty perspective at the Virtual University of Pakistan. And it is a success story that I think the world needs to know about. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Welcome.